Hey y'all, welcome back to Business Gossip. This is episode three and I'm proud of myself because I'm on a roll. It's only the third episode, but still, knowing my track record and how inconsistent I am with YouTube, this is a celebration for me. So, can't clap for me. <laughs> Welcome to Business Gossip, episode three, where we talk about everything business. So here we spill the tea on everything business, teaching you the same principle and strategies I use to scale my business to multiple six figures. So let's get right into it. So I want to talk about the customer's buying journey. And I want to talk about that because I posted a video on TikTok I got so many comments from people saying how slow their businesses are, they're not getting any sales, and they've been in business for quite some time. So I'm gonna tell y'all what customers think when they come across your website. So I'm gonna put myself in the customer's um, point of view so you can understand why your business is slow. But I wanna say this, just because your business is slow right now does not mean your business is failing. It just means you're in the learning stages. Use this time to wear the different hats in your business. You're the marketing agency, be the influencer, be the customer service support, be all of those things. When you wear these different hats in your business, it allows you to minimize the problems that you'll face when you are when you start to scale, when you start getting chargebacks or when you have a customer support issue, um, when you decide to hire a marketing agency and they're not doing their job properly, you can go and look in your Facebook ads manager and see where the ads aren't performing. So take this time and be a student in your business. That's a good word. Take this time to be a student. So when you have worn these different hats and you feel like you are in the space to where you're able to now, you're ready for the traffic, you, you're ready for the influx of orders and you have the manpower to package and ship these orders. This is what I want you all to understand. So when a customer comes to comes in contact with your brand, immediately they are not coming to buy. They're coming to be nosy. They're coming to scope things out, see what you're selling, how committed you are to the brand, and they want to get to know you as the brand owner. When I first started my business selling shoes and I began running ads, the first thing I see on my comments is always, have you received this order? Is this business legit? And they'll ask and tag other customers, hey love, did you get your order? So you have to be able to build that brand trust. So the first time they come in contact with your brand or they go to your website, they're just gonna browse around. That's the first time. It's gonna take your customer three to four times to visit your website before they decide to make a purchase. So you have the customer's buying journey and then you have your funnels in place. And what your funnel is, is all of the back office automations, your email and text messaging series. When a customer comes to your website and they click on a specific product that they may be interested in, this is where your funnel will take place. Your funnel and all of your automations are going to capture and also Google Analytics. They're gonna capture that buyer's journey as they click around on your website. So if you go to your Google Analytics, you can see where a customer is spending most of their time. So in your Google Analytics, you can see how long a customer has stayed on a product page. And if there's a trend of multiple customers coming to that specific product, you know that that is gonna be your top selling product. So you need to put that product on the front of your home page. Do not make it hard for customers to find a product that you see in your data that can possibly be a top selling product. So back to this, back to the journey. When a customer comes and they click on a product, they spend time on a product, they may add it to their cart, they may get to the checkout page, but decide not to buy. A lot of customers know if they abandon their checkout, they're gonna get an automatic email or a text messaging saying, hey, you've abandoned your cart, here's 15, 20% off, blah, 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 come complete your purchase, and then they may complete it, right? 
if a customer comes to the website and they browse the product, they've added to the cart, get to the checkout stage, but decides to abandon checkout and you don't have your automations in place, you just lost a potential customer. But if you have that automation in place, that's a part of your funnel and you able to capture that customer, that potential customer who is now a warm audience and you capture them within your funnel, they're in your funnel forever. So you can continue to send them emails and text messages as long as they do not unsubscribe. So as a customer, those who are out there in the world that has no idea about who or what your brand is, they are considered cold audiences. They don't know anything about you. They haven't seen you before. So when they see your ad or whatever it is, your content, on social media and they click on it they start browsing your content going on clicking on your page Facebook Instagram YouTube or even TikTok they then become a warm audience because they decided to click around they find something that they're interested in once they hit that website you make sure you have a pop-up in place to capture their email and um, text message. You have to stay in front of your audience so that you can make sure you stay relevant. One of the issues that I had with my shoe business is I was really bad about staying in front of my audience. I would go viral, my boots would sell out, but then I get lost. And then when I try to make another post, days later, I'm lost in the algorithm. So I have to warm Instagram up again for me to be able to start getting hundreds and thousands of views again. So you want to make sure you have your automations in place when it comes to email and text messaging. If you do not post on social media, make sure you are staying in front of your audience face because once they make a purchase or they start browsing around, they are interested in you. So now you just need to continue to feed that audience so that they can continue to be a returning customer. Once you have a customer in your email or text message database, you want to cherish those people because they know who you are. They know your product is good. So you want them to continue to purchase from you. You want to retain them as a customer. That's where customer retention comes in. Now, when you're sending these emails and text messages out, I want you to make sure you keep in mind of the audience that you have. Y'all know when we get these text messages, if you're on Fashion Nova text message list, they know who their audience is. Fashion Nova be cursing in their text message. They be saying all type of stuff. They just reckless with their text messaging, but they know who their audience is. They know what their audience tone of voice is. So they use that. And then, you know, of course, they're a multi-million dollar business. So let me describe what a funnel would look like. At the top of your funnel would be your ads or your content, what the customer will see the first time they see your brand. The middle of the funnel would be your pop-ups on your website, your email and text messaging marketing, okay? And then the bottom of the funnel will be your retargeting ads or something that will get your customer get the customers back to complete a purchase a lot of people do get discouraged when they start to run facebook ads that they're not getting a lot of traffic and it's probably because you are running the incorrect type of ads now with traffic ads which i see a lot you're just basically telling facebook to go get me um Anybody who will be interested in just coming to my website browsing, you're not asking Facebook to go grab those people who want to are engaged shoppers or who are looking to purchase. Make sure you're always running conversion ads. Conversion ads are telling Facebook to go grab those people who are interested, who will be most likely interested in my product, product and are looking to make a purchase. If they're not looking to make a purchase right away, I'm going to keep in front of them because something that I have, they are interested in and I'm going to use my automations, which is my funnel, to bring them back and then add them onto my text message and email list and have them as a returning customer. So when you set up your Facebook ads, you should only be running two campaigns. You should be running a conversion campaign and also which is the top of the funnel and then you want to run a retargeting campaign which will be at the bottom of the funnel a retargeting campaign is someone who came to the website decided not to purchase and they go back on facebook instagram tiktok whatever and they see another different ad from you so when you are setting up your campaigns for conversions, it should be a completely different ad creative or content from the retargeting. You wanna make sure you give the retargeting campaign a completely different type of content. The retargeting campaign should always 
offers some type of incentive, maybe free shipping or 10 to 15% off. If you don't know what type of content to put in front of your audience, you can always go to Facebook Ads Library and they do have um, a platform where you can look at other people's ad creatives that they're running at the time. With Fashion Nova and these large brands, they run several different campaigns at one time. As a small business, that won't be necessary. You should only be running two campaigns. But starting off, if you're just starting to run a campaign, you should only be running ca conversion campaigns. But let me say this, don't expect to make sales, a lot of sales rather, when you're first starting to run Facebook ads. When you begin to run Facebook ads, that first two weeks, you're just strictly collecting data and telling Facebook, well, and the ads are telling Facebook, what audience they should continue to target as those ads continue to run. Now, as your ad account begin to warm up and learn what type of audience that they should pull into your website, Facebook would do, then do a better job of grabbing those audiences who are most likely going to purchase. Now, for me, when I run Facebook ads, I'm always making about forty to fifty thousand dollars a month running just Facebook ads, and that's not even just um, content I post out on social media. It's just running Facebook ads. Now, depending on your product, I personally start my Facebook ads running at forty-five dollars a day. If you have a higher ticket product, you do need to spend a little bit more money. So depending on the product or service that you have, you want to determine how much money you're going to spend a day. So if you offering a two, three hundred dollar product, I will highly suggest you start running your Facebook ads around sixty five to seventy dollars a day just to get that data and make sure you are adding the interest that is targeted for your specific product or service. People do have different tactics when running Facebook ads. Um, I know a lot of people like to run Facebook ads with an open audience, not using any interest. That does not work for everybody. In order to figure out what works best for you, you just have to do a lot of testing. So don't get discouraged if you're spending hundreds of dollars um, on Facebook ad. It is an investment. It's not a guarantee, but there won't be a time where you're just running Facebook ads and you're not going to make any sales, but you want to make sure that you have them structured properly. So I'm going to give you the structure that I use when I run my Facebook ads. So first things first, when I run my conversion ad, I always use my top five interests, right? So, and I use two to three different creatives, but I have one campaign depending on how many interests I'm going to use. So say, for instance, I'm going to use five different interests for my campaign. I'm going to break those down in five different ad sets. Each interest need to be in its own ad set. That way you keep track of how well that interest is doing, whether you need to increase the budget or decrease the budget, or you may just need to completely kill the interest altogether if it's not bringing any sales. Next, you wanna make sure you have at least two different creatives for each ad set. So over time, you wanna let your campaign run for at least four to seven days to see how well it does, and then determine whether or not you're going to stop or continue the campaign from there. Now, here's where people mess up a lot when it comes to running Facebook ads. You want to start turning your Facebook ads off at the creative level, meaning the content level. So you wanna go all the way to your ad level and whatever content is not performing the best, you begin turning them off from the ad level. Then from the ad level, you take a look at your ad sets and see which one is performing the least. And this is after four to seven days now. Do not touch it until you have reached that four to seven day mark. And then you want from the ad level, you then start turning them off from the ad set level and so forth. Now, before you even think about running Facebook ads, please make sure you only use creatives that has been proven to get the attention from your audience. So take your existing posts or go back um, and look at your Facebook or Instagram posts that have performed the best and use those as creative to run Facebook ads. Never use a brand new creative that you have not post to run Facebook ads. So when you go and you post your ad copy or your ad creative, 
it's going to ask you if you want to add a new video or an existing post always choose an existing post I always go to my Instagram because I never hardly post on my Facebook, my business Facebook page, or if I do, it automatically goes over to my Facebook. But anytime I run an ad, it's a creative that has already been proven to go viral and people will be interested in. This cuts back on wasting a lot of money and trying to figure out whether this ad creative is gonna work or not. Once you have your ads in place, I need you to make sure that your email and text message marketing are all set to go. So the number one platform that I love for email marketing is of course Clavio. Clavio or Clavio, however you pronounce it. Um, but Clavio has an amazing amazing customer or business support where you can contact them and they'll have someone walk you through Clavio and setting up your flows or you can just use someone on Fiverr which is what I did to set your flows up for you so one way one creative way to be able to stay in front of your audience is send out um, a product of the day, send them happy birthday emails, offer them incentives for their birthday. Even for the holidays, you should always have some type of email going out automatically for holidays. And it may take some time, but have all this stuff set up so that you can just set it and forget it. If your automations is not in place, y'all, you are leaving thousands on the table. For text message marketing, I suggest using SMS bump. I know Clavio now has um, text message embedded with their platform, but I still have a completely separate platform for my text message. So I do use SMS bump. So for my email automations, I have when someone comes to my websites and sign up for um, my pop-up, you know, you have the pop-up that comes up and say, you know, enter your email address to receive 15% off. That will be considered your welcome series. So when you send them, um, their first email from the work welcome series, make sure you have the 10 or 15% in there that you promised on that pop-up or they will send you an email happened to me several times. So make sure your coupon codes work on the back end of your office office and within that welcome series they should you should talk about the brand um talk about who you are as the brand owner what your brand stands for the history do some bts now if someone abandons their cart wait an hour make sure you send them an automatic text message or email for them to come back and uh, recover their cart and if someone abandons their checkout y'all i just learned a while ago that Car abandonment and checkout abandonment is two separate things. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, it's two separate things. So when someone adds something to the cart and they leave it, that's their car abandonment. But if they make it to the checkout page, they're abandoning the checkout. So although it has seemed small, it's like, I never thought about that. So I had, I never had my checkout abandonment set up i always had my car abandonment set up but baby listen just from checkout abandonment automations alone i've made ten thousand dollars a little over ten thousand dollars in recovery that's crazy so just imagine if i did not have my automations for my checkout abandonments in place i'd be in trouble i'm literally leaving thousands on the table and here's another thing that um that made me thousands is upselling your products so with my brand moray i um when they purchase a dress i immediately upsell them to another so this increases your average order value so instead of my average order value being 45 dollars, which is the cost of my sundresses now my average order value is about 75 to 85 dollars because i'm upselling them offering them a bigger discount when they add a second product to the cart and the app that i use for that is called honeycomb upsell and that app it's absolutely amazing. The moment I added Honeycomb to my Shopify store, I started making money immediately. I've never had anyone come to my Shopify store and just purchase one product. They've always purchased two or more. Absolutely amazing. If you do not have an upsell app on your Shopify store, baby, you are missing out on a lot of money. Thousands. Make sure you go to Shopify and add Honeycomb 
to your Shopify store. And also they have Sweet Up Sell as well. Sweet Up Sell is a very good app, but I've grown to love Honeycomb, definitely. I had Sweet Up Sell before. Was no particular reason as to why I don't have it anymore, but um, Honeycomb is definitely the way to go. And they're very cost effective too. I mentioned this on my TikTok, but I'ma leave y'all with some homework, okay? I want you to leave in the comment what bigger brand do you inspire to be like or um, that inspires you or inspires your brand and whatever that brand is tonight I want you to go and get on their email and their text messaging list and purchase some from purchase something from them see how they package their products look at how they speak to the audience because if you inspire to be like them, they probably have the exact same audience as you do. So make sure you always use that tone of voice and use AI. AI is really good with portraying that tone of voice. So if you don't know how to speak to your audience, tell AI exactly what you want and they can give you a ton of different ideas and scripts to give you for you to be able to convey that tone of voice to your audience. But Go get on your um, on your competitors or the bigger brands email and text messaging list. These are the things that you're looking for when you get on their text messaging list. You're looking at how often they send the email, how often they send the text message. When you order from them or when you abandon your cart or checkout, do both. Make sure you abandon your cart and then later abandon your checkout. If you need to um, go under different computers or go, go incognito, do both. See how quickly they send you a reminder to um, recover your abandoned cart and your abandoned checkout. Make note of it because you want to implement these same things in your business. It's very important. If they're doing it, it's because they're working. So you need to do it so it can work for you as well. Because again, y'all have the same audience. So everything may not work for everybody, but you're in the testing phase. As your business is growing and you're learning, use this time to test different things in your business so that when you do grow and you scale, you know what works. This is the biggest advice as a business owner that I can give you. Never change what's working. Let it continue to work until it fades out. And once it fades out, then you make the necessary tweaks. See if it works again. If it does work, leave it alone. Let it continue to play out. Yes, everything is not going to last forever. Your ads are going to get um, fatigue, meaning you're going to get creative fatigue, meaning at a certain point, is going to die down that means you need to start cranking it up again figure out a different creative go back to your instagram or tiktok see which creative has been performing the best and use those so as when you get creative fatigue it's going to be probably close to about a month if it doesn't die down before then but nothing lasts forever but if it's working do not touch it also with my ad account every time and you'll learn this when you begin to start running facebook ads with my ad account it does not like me to increase the budget it this may not work for you this may not apply to you but this is hap this happens with my specific ad account so every time i increase my budget by five to 10%, my ads start to slow down, my step, my sales begin to slow down. So the only way I can continue to keep my ads going and be able to scale and be able to scale aggressively, I have to duplicate that campaign into a separate campaign and continue to duplicate it if it continues to do well. And always remember to decrease from the ad level, not the campaign or the ad set level. All right. I hope this video was helpful. If you all have any questions, make sure you leave them in the comments down below. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and put on that bell notification so you can be notified when I go and post again next Wednesday at 3 p.m. Thank y'all so much for watching. I love y'all and I will see y'all next week. Bye.